I'm over the moon about winning this Golden Globe for Queen's Gambit. This has been a 30 year journey to get this story uh, on the screen. Uh, my partner, Alan Scott, you know, got the rights back in the early 90s. Scott Frank and I started talking about doing this about 15, 16 years ago. So it's just been amazing. Uh, you know, it's the best kind of success when you have a sleeper that uh, is just entirely driven by word of mouth. And the audience discovered this show. They became the greatest, you know, marketing team we could ever assemble. And they just started telling everybody around the world that, you know, they had to go and see this and see Anya's, you know, fantastic performance. The worlds that we built, uh, our incredible art department, costume department, the music. Yeah, it was really a, a, a fantastic experience. What is it about chess that makes people, I mean, that fascinates people so much? When did your love affair start with chess? Because you also did produce um, uh, the Searching for Bobby Fischer. So this isn't your first love affair with chess. Well, in both cases, I kind of discovered chess really through these amazing books. Uh, you know, I, I love Fred Waitzkin's memoir about his son, Josh. Uh, it was a very touching father-son story and a story about competition uh, among children. And, um, and that was what really hooked me in was the human story. And then through that, I got into this whole uh, culture of chess and the beauty of the game and the amazing characters in the history of the game. Uh, so Queen's Gambit was very much the same. I, I read Walter Tevis's novel because the writer Michael Ondaatje, who wrote The English Patient, he told me about this book that he loved and that he read it every couple of years and it kind of reminded him how to write. <laughs> So I went out and got it and I, I just loved it from the first page. And it was really walking in Beth Harmon's shoes and what a unique and complicated character she was to be a young woman at that time in you know, such a patriarchal world uh, and to really go her own way and kind of follow her own drummer. Um, and you know her, her journey is not Uh, an easy one. You know, she really is wrestling with her own demons. So you just desperately want her to be okay and are kind of turning the pages. Uh, and then again, you know, it takes you into that world of chess and you kind of learn about it as she's learning about it, as she starts to go to tournaments, you know, locally. And then ultimately she gets into the major leagues of chess and she goes to Paris and she goes to Russia and it was very romantic somehow. Um, so yeah, I think in both stories, I really uh, got into it and got hooked through character uh, and then, you know, enjoyed the beauty of the game. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to celebrate tonight? Are you going to play chess or are you going to, you know, open a bottle of champagne? <sighs> Well, I'm here with my daughter, which is a beautiful gift for me. Uh, I'm going to go home and, you know, uh, see my family. Uh, my mom is in Chicago, but I know she's eager to talk to me. So I'm going to call her and, uh, yeah, we'll probably crack open a little champagne and raise a toast uh, to an incredible team. You know, I, I was so lucky Scott Frank and I met at Paramount in 1987, you know, so our relationship is, you know, almost 35 years old <laughs> at this point. And it was really a great thing for the two of us to kind of reunite and collaborate on this series together. Well, and I wish you cheers and a good night and it's well-deserved. So celebrate on. Good night. Thank you so much.